900 volt architecture, 500 kilowatt fast charging, charging the battery from 10 to 80% in 10 minutes, 300 kilometers of EV only range. Guys, I've been saying for a while now, be careful buying a plug-in hybrid. The current tech we're seeing in the Western world is so far behind all the new generation vehicles coming out of China, which have, some of them have, or well, insane numbers like this. Welcome back, everyone. Guys, if you can become a YouTube member, that would be awesome because it would really help support the channel. I'll put a link in the description to our member page. If you thought the era of the plug-in hybrid was over because I said it was, well, think again. There are actually some incredible tech plug-in hybrids coming that are far advanced than the plug-in hybrids you can currently buy today in the Western world. Zika have just unofficially unveiled their, well, not unveiled it, but they've showed us the data for the new Zika 8X SUV. The specs are pretty mind-blowing. This thing is so powerful that I think it would scare anyone, even a race car driver. It's got more than a 1,000 kilowatt. I mean, <laughs> guys, this thing's going to be up to do 0 to 100, probably about 2.7 seconds. 2.7, 2.8 seconds around there. So if you want to beat a Ferrari, a Porsche, pretty much any supercar except maybe a Bugatti, this is this is the car for you. Or if you just want to be able to take your family of five or six, this can seat six people. There's a three-row option. You just want to take them around in style, then this could be perfect. So 1,400 horsepower, a battery so big it has more range than many EVs on the market. This is the super hybrid that is heading to many markets around the world, including Australia. It's basically the same size as a Toyota Land Cruiser or a BMW X7, but much, much better, far more advanced than those cars. And in fact, this is actually remarkably light for how big it is and the tech you're getting. The Chinese Ministry of Industry and Information Technology just released the official specs for the Zika 8X. The size, it's big. In fact, it's kind of a monster. It's about 5.1 meters long. So it's much bigger than the Zika 7X. And it sits on a massive 3,070 millimeter wheelbase. To put that in perspective, it's longer and wider than an Audi Q7 or a Volvo XC90. I've got to say, I think it looks really good though for the size. They've done a really good job of kind of hiding the large dimensions. Zika is offering this in both a five and six seat layout. Perfect for families if they've got extra kids. And this thing is, for the size and tech that it's coming with, the size of the batteries, it's actually quite light. 2,660 kilos, which is about, about 5,800 pounds. That's the base rear wheel drive with the smaller battery. If you get the all wheel drive with a massive 70 kilowatt hour battery, the weight is 2,800 kilograms. Now the mid-spec option, which is all-wheel drive with the smaller battery, that weighs around 2,700 kilograms. Towing, so this is pretty good news. You want something that can tow, it doesn't tow heaps, but 2,000 kilograms of brake towing. So keep all that weight on the road though, Zika is offering three different massive tire sizes for the base model rear-wheel drive, 255s. So that's the width of the tires, 255, and they are 20 inch rims. The mid-spec, which is the all-wheel drive with the same battery, has 255s as well, but 21 inch rims, and the all-wheel drive with over 1,000, 1,030 kilowatt, that has 275s and 22 inch rims, massive rims. Plus, red performance calipers. Now, you'd want good brakes with a car this size. So if you'd like to book a paid consultation, uh, you can do so, and I'll put a link in the description below. If you want advice on what electric car to buy, solar systems, all that kind of stuff, you can do that. Fortunately, the big positive with EVs and even with plug-in hybrids and e-revs is they have regen braking. And the regen braking, obviously, if you've got a vehicle this big and you're going fast, you can stop better, I think, than in a normal vehicle that's, in, that's an ICE vehicle. This is something we should talk about more often. I don't, I don't do this, and it's my fault. Clearly, because bigger vehicles, there's many heavy vehicles that are not EVs on the roads and they just have normal brakes. And slowing one of those down can be quite 
difficult. In fact, I know it can because I've driven lots of them. But when you combine regen and normal braking, usually that's a, a performance advantage. So the braking in this is said to be quite good. Under the hood, instead of a trunk, uh, instead of a frunk, I should say, there is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder producing 275 horsepower, which is about 200 kilowatt. That's just really more of a generator engine though, because this thing has so much range, you probably wouldn't be using the engine to drive the car in all but maybe 1% of driving situations. Top speed is 220 kilometers an hour. Now the motors, there is three motors, right? In the all wheel drive versions of this vehicle, putting out a total of 1,030 kilowatt. That's 1,381 horsepower. Zero to 100 will take just under three seconds, probably about 2.8, 2.9 seconds. The battery, here's the thing. Um, no one's actually mentioned this, but I got this information from Geely, from Zika. They aren't using old school batteries. They're using Geely's new Aegis short blade battery, lithium ion phosphate. Energy density is around 192 watt hours per kilogram versus BYD's blade battery, which is at about 165 watt hours per kilogram. So they're quite energy dense batteries plus their lithium ion phosphate, very, very good batteries. These short blade cells have a life cycle of more than three and a half thousand. So that's about 1 million kilometers of driving life from the batteries. They're safe. They handle extreme cold better and they support ultra fast charging. Speaking of ultra fast charging, we'll get to that in a second. The range, you got a choice. So the base model comes with a 55 kilowatt hour battery and the, the, the top spec model gets a 70 kilowatt hour battery. That 75 kilowatt hour battery gives you 328 kilometers of electric range, WLTC. WLTP would be about 300 kilometers of range. It's going to be really, really unusual you'd need to actually use the engine in this vehicle. Most people could drive this for months without ever burning a single drop of petrol. But if you do choose to use the engine, you can get more than 1,000 kilometers from the combination of the batteries and the engine. And for a car this size, that's extremely unusual, especially considering it's only got a fairly small fuel tank. So is it coming to the Australian market? Is it coming to the US market? No, but although Geely are saying they're planning to enter the US market in two to three years, it's like maybe it could come there. Uh, Australia, managing director, as in the CEO of Zika in Australia, has confirmed that super hybrids are coming to Australia in 2026. While the massive 9X is under consideration, the 8X is probably the more likely vehicle to come, I believe, because it will likely sit under the 100,000 AU, which is about 65,000 US dollar, mark in China, making it a direct threat to the BMW X6 and the Lexus RX. This is the ultimate luxury all-round vehicle. Now, along with air suspension, which is really good in big vehicles. It means that on freeways, you can drive in a, at a lower height and you're gonna get a lot more range from the battery only. And in fact, from the combined range as well. But then if you're off the freeway and you wanna do a little bit off-road driving, you can, you, can you can heighten that suspension, you know, and really have a vehicle that's capable of going off-road. So that's one advantage of, of the air suspension feature that this will have. Now the platform itself, it's a 900 volt platform which is a very, very high voltage architecture, obviously, especially for a plug-in hybrid, and it supports 6C ultra-fast charging. Charging speed is approximately 500 kilowatt. It's one of the fastest charging, if not the fastest charging plug-in hybrid in the world. That means you can charge the battery from 10 to 80% in 10 minutes. And we're talking about a 70 kilowatt hour battery here, guys. Now, it even supports... 60, v, 60 kilowatt V2V, vehicle to vehicle. So you can send 60 kilowatt of power to another vehicle. If you want to use vehicle to load, it has six kilowatt vehicle to load. So this is a far more advanced vehicle than any current BYD you can buy. Even the most expensive versions that cost upwards of 160,000 US dollars. This has more range, a far better architecture, far faster charging speed. In fact, it's got more power as well. Honestly, I mean, it's actually pretty awesome. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm completely diehard EV. But if you're going to get a hybrid, this, this really might be the one to get. Thanks for watching.
Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.